Hello, I am Lux. And I'm Ember. <laughs> and by that cringe of fear, we're going to be talking about Care Bears x Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> In this episode of Crossovers, we explore the dark side of destroying childhood memories with Care Bears crossover with Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped into my evil laugh there, excuse me. <laughs> For what? This is evil. <laughs> Apparently this was my idea. I completely forgot about it until she mentioned it in a previous episode of ours. Uh, it's less about a crossover really and how the characters would react in that world. Because as I was thinking about this, it hit me like, you know, the carriers would come there trying to help the kids, and would they do it before the accident? Or would we be me really mean and put it there where they're trying to help their evil, well not evil, their corrupted spirits, and help free them from being trapped inside those horrible, horrible, haunted animatronics. <laughs> and you can tell Ember's not talking because she's in the corner having her ears plugged. <laughs> la la la, I'm not listening. <laughs> Uh, maybe you can at least share your thoughts on that concept I just came up with. Well, they're Care Bears. Hopefully they would show up before any of the murders because children are crying before the murders. Care Bears help crying children. So this should be pre-murder and hopefully we can get the children in the cloud cars and away from the murders and then Five Nights at Freddy's will never happen. <laughs> I was also thinking about how the designs would be kind of interesting of, of turning some of the Care Bears into what they would look like as Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics. And there you go with the whole ruining childhood memories thing again. <laughs> Which I might draw as the reference. I could also just draw a cute Care Bear looking at the mini plushy version of Springtrap. <laughs> Whatever is cute and horrifying at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, I've never found Springtrap cute. You you want to go with the Foxy plushie? Foxy plushie was cute. <laughs> yes, that Foxy plushie was very cute. And when Markiplier was playing it, going, "Are you are you okay? Get are you okay yet? Are you okay yet? <laughs> oh, he's okay now." <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of funny. Me and her are not really interested in playing. The Five Nights at Freddy's games, though we know a lot about their lore because apparently she has a strange obsession with it. <laughs> Which is strange because I don't do point and click games. I do not do horror stories on any level. Almost every single jump scare gets me when I'm watching the games. And I got caught up in the lore enough somewhere between the first and second games that I like had to stay up late and fill my brain with other things because I couldn't go to sleep because my imagination is a scary place. And Scott Cawtham wasn't helping it. <laughs> Must watch pretty ponies, cat videos, anything. It's like even watching Marker Player playing another horror game would help. <laughs> Probably not, but watching him play Fail Man might have helped, but I don't think that recording was out back then. <laughs> but if you really think about it, the first Kerber movie was kind of creepy. <laughs> it definitely had points of, well, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, this is something you can probably hear your thoughts on. What you thought about the original Care Bear series. Because I can just do the crossover stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> the real point of these crossovers is to share your thoughts on both genres and how we think they would fit together. Yeah, I did watch the original Care Bear series and... Yeah, so the whole mirror thing and the sorcerer's apprentice type thing going along with it, very creepy. The mirror creature was very creepy. Uh, and some of the voice acting, the way it was done, kind of gives off a creepy vibe. Especially when you have kids involved, especially nowadays, everyone's brain goes, <laughs> Uh What's really funny is some of my favorite characters aren't really Care Bears, they're technically Care Bear cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Braveheart Lion or Swiftheart Rabbit? Both. <laughs> Mostly Swiftheart Rabbit, which I can't really remember is either a boy or a girl. I think Swiftheart Rabbit was actually a girl, or at least had a very feminine voice. I always thought of Swiftheart Rabbit as a boy, but you know, that was the 80s programming of blue is for boy, pink is for girls. Hmm. And that's another thing. Would we use just the regular Care Bears or bring in the cousins for the crossover? Hmm. <laughs> this is just me pondering here. 
I think we're going to need as many to pull off a Care Bear stare as possible. <laughs> because that's got to work better than the flashlight. <laughs> so why don't you make a mod of the game where when the flashlight clicks on, it's actually one of the uh, belly symbols blasting out. Uh... No, 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 the bat signal. Because you need help. <laughs> I'm Batman. How did you defeat all of these evil animatronics? I'm Batman. <laughs> uh, but actually, now that you think about it, their Care Bears Terror could probably purify, kind of like the Elements of Harmony, the spirits inside the animatronics. Mm -hmm. And then we could have good animatronics instead of murderous animatronics. Mm -hmm. Of course, we could also use the Care Bears Terror on the purple guy and see what happens. <laughs> I'm melting! I'm melting! <laughs> What a world! <laughs> I love how you're starting to have fun with this. Mainly because you're like, we get to kill him now, yay! <laughs> but yeah, I watched a lot of the original series. I remember, I remember one specific episode. I'm going back to Care Bears here, by the way. <laughs> and back to Swift Heart Rabbit, specifically in an episode with him. And it was the classic Tortoise and the Hare, because she's like the fastest of the Care Bear cousins. And it was this race. And she was doing the whole thing where she was waiting at start for a while, letting everyone else get really ahead of her, and then she took off. <laughs> I don't really remember exactly how it came out, but I'm pretty sure she lost, because, you know, it was based on the classic tale where the rabbit loses. Yeah, and, you know, children's show, so we want to teach the lesson that you shouldn't be overconfident and arrogant. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to talk about any of your thoughts on the lore of Five Nights at Freddy's? My lore is in a bit of an uproar right now because I haven't fit number four into the timeline and I haven't watched Matt Pat's take on it yet to help me settle it. <laughs> because so far I've mostly fallen in line with his theory and it was his theory on Five Nights One that started creeping me out in the first place. Thank you, Matt Pat. <laughs> uh yeah, my theory is based on his, but also based on some stuff Scott Coffin has kind of leaked out. I worked this actually right after the bite incident, and I believe the bite incident is right after the first game, which is technically the second game in the timeline. So this is either right after or right before that game. It's right around there, because it I think it actually takes place in two parts of the timeline. All the flashbacks are actually before the bite, so I think they're before the first game. And all the room scenes are of the older brother who's in the hospital after something I'm not quite sure what right now I have to relook that information up. <laughs> but actually happened right after the first game. So this fourth game actually takes place in two parts of the timeline. See, and I wasn't theorizing that the low-res day scenes and the high-res night scenes were two different character perspectives. I was using the countdown of days to the party to place this as occurring concurrently with Five Nights at Freddy's 2 because on the last night you get switched to day shift for the big birthday party and that was in 1987 and we see in Five Nights 4 that really 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 looks like the bite of 87 which you know kind of busted my theory that you know it was an evil adult that the animatronics bit rather than an innocent child. The problem with that is the costume matchup because Five Nights 2 has the Toy Tron animatronics but the animatronics that we see on stage during the low res bite of 87 look more like the original animatronics mm -hmm. though i don't know how you would tell a toy version in the low res version mm. huh. but at the same time you know there are already rumors so there should already be some animatronics that are haunted because on the day the child runs home from the pizzeria, still staying in game four, the people he talks to on the way back to the house reference the rumors of people being killed and shoved inside the animatronics and how dangerous the animatronics are, mm. which is a strange reference because the animatronics were allowed to roam free until the bite of 87. Mm. But according to the rumors that are going around, 
there's already been some violence which has occurred, though, you know, we do have several locations over which the murders supposedly take place. Also, I want to know why in the low res days until the party, your Freddy plushie is everywhere you go. It's seriously creepy. You're running home and his face is in the flowers. You're in a room and he's in the room. You walk around the room and his eyes follow you. So how did the plushie get possessed? <laughs> yeah, there's this theory going around that the plushie is actually the spirit that eventually ends up in the puppet. Or, eh, my kind of theory is it's a previous spirit or something because I think the kid, the crying kid in Five Nights at Freddy's 4 actually becomes the puppet later. Which, if you think about it, kind of explains why the puppet itself doesn't really seem to have any fear. Because a frontal lobe injury kind of removes that part of you. Yeah, except the current theory holds that the crying child that we see murdered during the Five Nights 2 minigames is the one who becomes the puppet. He is very clearly stabbed to death outside the pizzeria while crying, not shoved into a suit and has his half his face bitten off. Hmm, a lot of questions. But are we here to end them? No, we're here to have fun thinking about how we can destroy people's childhoods by cramming Care Bears into suits. <laughs> but the animatronics wouldn't have any trouble with the Care Bears because they already look like animals, so they could very easily pass as fursuiters. <laughs> yeah, that just hit me. The Care Bears wouldn't register as a threat or a human because, well, they look like animatronics already. Yeah, so that would not be an issue, so the animatronics should leave them alone because they're not going to come up on the Predator registry that the toy animatronics have, and they're not going to come up under the Five Night One rules of, oh, look at you, you are an animatronic not in a suit and that's against the rules. If anything, it's going to be like, dude, that's not a regulation suit. I think the only problem they would have is with Foxy and Mangle who both in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, both could see through the mask if you were wearing it. Yeah, but great thing, they're not masks. They're really bears. So shall we sum things up? <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this has been my thoughts on... <laughs> Actually, it's been mine and Ember's thoughts on Care Bears X Five Nights at Freddy's. Mostly an excuse to talk about the two series, share our thoughts on some of the theories behind Five Nights at Freddy's, and just point out how much we like the original Care Bears and how I was like evil. With it. Let's put these two together, and how she's like. Eep. <laughs> Yeah, you guys better start subscribing after this one because Lux is going to owe me for some therapy sessions. <laughs> Oh, my wallet. Thanks for watching. If you liked our channel and want to see more, please consider subscribing and or leaving a comment below. Please keep it friendly. If you liked my art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep up to date with updates on this podcast, you can also find us over on Tumblr as well. If you really liked my artwork and wanted some of your own, I am currently open for commissions. All links in the description.